maybe talking about the Holy Spirit before we have communion and do some um, Holy Spirit stuff, and singing, etc. So, um, <clears throat> I'd just like to read a verse out of um, John 14, 16. Jesus said to his disciples, I will send another comforter to you. Hey, that was amazing. That he would say, I will send another comforter. What does that tell you in your mind? What does it tell you? We already have one. It's telling me that Jesus is a comforter. Was a comforter then, in flesh. He actually served the same thing then as the Holy Spirit serves. Well, the Holy Spirit serves the same thing as Jesus served. And Jesus must have seen that he was the comforter. Otherwise he wouldn't have said that. I will send another comforter. I've never seen it before. So that tells me that the Holy Spirit can do exactly the same thing for us as Jesus would do here in the flesh. So we're not... We haven't got a, a substandard life because we don't have Jesus standing here in the flesh. It tells me that we have exactly the same with him being the comforter and the Holy Spirit as if he came and stood here. In fact, it probably tells me we, we, we wouldn't have any more if he stood here in the flesh than we have now. So that really tells me that how do you see the Holy Spirit being your comforter? And why did he actually say that, Je why did Jesus describe himself there as the comforter? I mean, everybody saw him as Jesus walking in flesh, being with, the, with, his, with his disciples, healing the sick, raising the dead. And in that capacity, he must have seen himself as being the comforter to people. And that we need a comforter just as much as the people did then. And we've got him. Hallelujah. He's the Holy Spirit. Um, I don't know how you can lead into communion on a message like this, but I'm going to try. So you know that <coughs> that um, Sunday, well it wasn't a Sunday, I don't know what day it was, sorry. That was the day of his resurrection. But they're all waiting in that room. I think there's something like maybe a hundred, I couldn't find a figure, but I thought there was sort of 20, 120 in that upper room. And you know how, how long it was since Jesus um, went to heaven from that point? It was roughly 10 days after his ascension. So were they waiting in there for 10 days? I kind of think they were. They were waiting, waiting, because he said, wait, wait for the, the what God is going to give you. Um, and they were kind of a bit off track earlier in Acts chapter 1. That they were just thinking that kingdom, Jesus is going to restore the kingdom. He's going to restore the kingdom of Israel as Israel was a kingdom. And so they just said, you know, or asked all sorts of unusual questions. They actually lost, they lost the track of what he was really saying. Hey, you know, you and I can lose the track of what Jesus is really saying. Um, they, said, they said to him, verse 6 of chapter 1 of Acts. So when they were assembled, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you're going to reestablish the kingdom and restore it to Israel? Because you must remember that these were people who were under what sort of rule? Roman rule. They were a, basically a Roman colony. And they were thinking, you know, we've got to get this thing right. We've got to kick the, the Romans out of here and we've got to establish it like we had way back <clears throat> when it was first established it. And he just said to them, no, this is not the time to know anything about that. He had said to them, um, not many days since, you will be receiving what the Father has promised them, which you've heard me speak of. But John baptized with water, not many days. From now you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know what? If you were told that and didn't know what it was about, how would you react? Well, so what's that? I mean, 
us Christians today, 2,000 years later, have a huge advantage over the Christians then. Because we know the end from the big, we know the, the end of the matter when they didn't know it. We're reading history, how it all worked out, aren't we? We should be rapturously um, even further ahead than these guys. Because they didn't know where they were heading. So they were in that upper room for ten days. And Mary and his brothers. I'm glad they put that in there that his brothers mm. were there. And Mary. Because Mary became a tongue talker. And so did the brothers, so they all spoke in tongues. Hey, imagine just how the Catholics, if you told them, look, you're, 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 the Mary you talk about so much, was, and she was a tongue talker. Why aren't you a tongue talker? Come on, the Catholic brothers and sisters. Mary was a tongue talker. Because it says they all were filled with the Holy Spirit and they all spoke in tongues with loud expression. <laughs> that was an exciting time. It was a, it was a raucous time, wasn't it? Do you think the devil has reduced Christianity to a non raucous time? Yes. Eh? He just pulled it down till we become little passive, 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 passive. You know, do you know, I think God, this, this day and hour wants to, to restore the enthusiasm and the vigorousness and the raucousness of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You think that's right? Yes. yes. Amen. I've just written here, the Holy Spirit came on the heads. Whew, fire. It came inside them permanently. What? It came on their vocal cords. Where are your vocal cords? Folks, uh, up here. This is your vocal. These are my vocal cords. Huh? I don't know about you guys. Uh, I don't know if you got any other way to express it. It came on their tongues. On their tongues, the Holy Spirit. It came with loud expression. It was the same Spirit that raised Jesus. That raised Jesus from the dead. Well, we read the well, we read the verses, huh? You like verses? And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. And my impression, they had also put out there for about maybe ten days. Hey, there's something about waiting, isn't it? You know, if you were there for ten days, could you just wait on something that God had promised for ten days? That's, that's Sunday now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm worried about my sandwiches now. Could you do that? Every state. I mean, could we do this? Could we in 2020 be these kind of people? I don't know. I don't know how much. I think by three days I'll be saying, well, God, you better send it quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, <clears throat> I just need to get out. I need a coffee, God. Oh, yes, um. I need to go, go down the road and visit a friend. Yeah, I like that nice rest, but I'm missing out on some of those good steaks down there. Yeah. Do you, your sort of brain would be working like that. Oh, no, 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 no. So after, after seven days, it hasn't arrived yet. God, I think we'll give up. I think we'll leave it. I think we'll leave it. I, I actually don't think I heard right that there's something was going to happen. I, I, I'm sure that that thing you said either is a lot later or, um, I missed it. Is it, Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, didn't he? Wait in Jerusalem. Wait, 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 wait. How long have you waited on God sometimes for something? You know, I said, God, well, look, I'm just going to pray here until I hear you say something. Yeah, well, sometimes I've found it slightly, I've done, you know, I've done that sort of thing, and I've found it slightly, you know, God, well, I didn't hear you. And suddenly, God shows me that thing by a different mechanism. But I come to think he likes us waiting. Are we, are we, live, we live in a world where, the, where you have instant coffee. So you go and dig the coffee out, crush, put it in a cup and you have coffee. That's what they call instant coffee. See, coffee really, it needs to be crushed just before you drink it. Hey. So we've become kind of instant people. And if something doesn't sort of happen in 
what, the first 10 minutes? <laughs> first 10, uh, 10 hours? We say, well, forget it, you know. We're not that kind of generation. We're not the generation that kind of waits anymore. Hey, maybe God's trying to say something to you, I don't know. Anyway, just think about that. Hey, I'm in this category as well, so I'm not blaming anybody else. I just realise what it's like inside me, ain't I? You're grinning. You understand what I'm saying with this. Uh, so, um, <coughs> so, um, where did I get the first verse? So they had fully come and they were all assembled together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like the rushing of a violent tempest blast and it filled the whole house. You know, for years I read that wrong. I always read that there was a, actually a wind whistle through there. It's only the sound of the wind. I wonder what that would sound like. I don't know how I would actually find that. But how I could actually duplicate that now. But it must be pretty noisy. And it said it come from heaven. It might, if you meet, if you live in a hurricane area, you might know what it's like. And there appeared to these, to them, tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed and which settled on each one of them. So tongues that look like fire, but it says resembling fire, so I don't think it was actually fire, but it was actually looked like fire, and it was Holy Spirit fire. Hey, would, would you like one of those? Yeah. I'd love, I'd love to have one of those. Well, two or three or five or six of them. I'd love to experience the stuff of the Holy Spirit in a way they have one. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be great today if the tongues of fire come down here. Would you have enough faith to believe it could happen? Tongues of fire on Pentecost Sunday. Amen. <clears throat> uh, it didn't hurt their heads. You know, so in, the, in the Azusa Street, when the Holy Spirit came in, in 1904, the fire of God, just like the tongues of fire, was about this high on, on the floor. It was about that high. And the children used to go in and complain and disappear into the, into the fire of God. And they come out alright. There's, there's nothing to be afraid of in the Holy Spirit. As it comes in the form of fire. Amen. Hallelujah. I would have liked that. I'd love to have an Azusa Street again. I honestly would. I think it would give us a lot of good. And it distributed and settled on each one. So it means that the, the, the fire split and sat on top of them all. And it says that they were all, remember this word, say all. all, all. They were all, all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Different tongues. Foreign tongues. As the Spirit kept giving them loud expression. Hey, they weren't miserable about it. It suddenly was, oh, sure, oh, mighty God, oh, my, it was noisy. A noisy time it was raucous. It got them so raucous that they thought they were drunk later on. Mm. Hey, I, 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 I quite like being zapped in the Holy Spirit. It doesn't give you an, it doesn't give you a head ache afterwards or a dry mouth. It's got the, all the good of having a. Some people say a pub time's good time, but it hasn't got the after effects. And it's tremendously from God, Amen. Mm. And it saves money as well. It's not expensive. What'd you say, Mary? I said better for your liver. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. And they're all filled, and I began to give them tongue. The Spirit kept giving them clear and loud expression in each tongue in appropriate words. Now there were in that time there were devout Jews there. And when the sound was heard, the multitude came together, and they were astonished and bewildered. So what sound? When what sound they came together? I think it was the sound of them talking in tongues. They came together and they're astonished. Hallelujah. And it says a word here which I quite like. And have you ever been there? And they were beside themselves. You know, what does beside yourself mean? Somebody give me your interpretation of that. Beside yourself, 
almost unbelievable. Yeah, you, you just can't, you just, you're just zonked away, you can't believe what's going on. I, I, do you like being right beside yourself with God? Well, I do. With amazement. And everybody said, it's only nine o'clock in the morning, but everybody heard stuff in their own tongues. And Peter, you know, there's a few Peters, isn't there? Peters. But Peter was always got up and said what he thought. He was a kind of a, a chatty guy. And he's... And they were beside... Again, it says they were beside themselves. In verse 12. With amazement. And were puzzled. And they made a, some made a joke of it. And said... Uh, <coughs> these men are simply drunk. With full of sweet intoxicating wine. So it must have looked similar, eh? Mm. Must have looked similar. So if it looked similar, it must have been quite a raucous time. You know, I know a, a guy, um, he's from America, and he gets so totally drunk in the Holy Spirit, yeah. just totally sloshed. And he went to Bristol with our group of his team. No one outside a pub, totally drunk in the Holy Spirit. They actually ministered to drunks. Being drunk in the Holy Spirit, they ministered to alcohol drunks. And the alcohol drunks couldn't tell the difference between the, 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 the alcohol drunks and the, and the Holy Spirit drunks. And so they ministered to those drunks. And they were getting them saved because they related to them in the way that they, they were. Isn't that good? I would like to be on that team, eh? Would you? Just out there. Because that's what the world needs. It needs this Holy Spirit. Unction that is full of joy and full of laughter and full of whatever else so that we can show the world how good it is to have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. What do you think of that? That's what this world needs. Hallelujah. <coughs> Jesus said he would send another comforter and that comforter would guide you into all truth. He would guide you into all truth. The spirit that we have within us is the spirit that will guide us into all truth. And some people say, well, you know, you could get off track. If you let the Holy Spirit go, you'll never get off track. Because he will guide us into all truth. If you have faith, then the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. You know, we live in a world, and even in this last eight weeks, there's so much out there that you don't know whether that's true, that's true, or that's true, or that's what, how it is, or that's how it happened. Um, this world is full of conspiracy theories. Would you agree with me? And we need to have the Spirit that will guide us into all truth so we can discern which one of these conspiracy theories is the right one, if, if none of them are well, well and good. We need this, my friends. I mean, on Pentecost Sunday, I'm telling you, we need to utilize this Holy Spirit we've got to discern all the conspiracies, all the lies, all the fakes, and so we can get... Would you agree with this? I mean, there's so much out there. We live in a world we need to know the truth of the matter. And this Holy Spirit that lives in each one of us here is the answer to knowing the truth. Because Jesus himself said he will guide you into all truth. Amen. You know, there's a lot of broken people out there. Isn't there? Come on. There's a lot of broken people out there. And even people that sometimes have a sweet smile on their face, are broken inside. And you know, I saw, I don't know if you ever watched that program on TV, where there's a place somewhere in England, that looks like an old garage, where they repair things that are broken. Anybody seen that program? Yes. And the other night there was a program where a girl, when she was 13, broke this beautiful, beautiful porcelain sweet dish, which was on, which was on a shaft about that high with angels, beautifully crafted, and then it came out like that. 
And when she was 13, she pulled the curtain across and the thing went on the floor and smashed into pieces. She's now a lady about 40. And she, it, was her, it was her father's only record back to his mother. The only thing that they had from their mother was this thing and she smashed it. And she lived in the guilt of that until she was 40, what she'd done. She'd smashed this beautiful thing and went into dozens of pieces. She went and smashed this beautiful thing and lived in guilt about what she'd done because it upset her dad. For what? About 25 years? Now that's crazy to live in guilt for 25 years. Do you agree with that? I mean, it's trying to destroy you. And they, went, they took this thing along to this repair thing and, and the lady looked at it and she said, we got most of the pieces. She said, yeah. And she actually, this woman, I don't know how long it took her, but glued all these pieces to pe together with a glue that you couldn't even see the cracks and put it back in its perfect state. And she came back to look at it when they fixed it. Honestly, it could have taken her a couple of weeks because she had to put every little piece in. She had to create some pieces. Actually, she had to create some wings for an angel. So this thing's about this, about as high as that. I suppose coming up the shop and the dish comes out. It was perfect. It was in tiny uh, fragments. Uh, it was in tiny fragments. Yeah, it was in just tiny fragments, like this, little bits. And you know that woman's guilt disappeared. At that moment, she said, I'm free from the guilt. And you know that some things in our lives that are like all like that, we need to get the pieces put back together by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit so that we can be whole. Every human being needs the power of Jesus Christ to put us back together inside. Amen. So anyway, look, that's the end of my Holy Spirit thing. So remember that when you leave this, leave here, you have the spirit in you that will lead you into all truth. If you're worried about, is this true, that true? Get the Holy Spirit on the side and say, Holy Spirit, is this truth or is that true? Is this a fake? Is this wrong? I want the truth of this. Amen. So We're a perfect partnership. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is the comforter. What? It's the para, paraclete. Paraclete. Just the wonderful standing by. He's standing by right now. Actually, just think of the Holy Spirit standing by. He's a standby. You know, I've never been in a position you need to stand by. Hey, you just caught for speeding. And, it's, and you're feeling very guilty by and looking at the clock. The Holy Spirit's just standing by there. He's probably not proving what you did, but he's alongside you. You know, somebody's just abused you, and he's just standing alongside you. Just remember he's standing alongside you. All the other things. His comforter, the counsellor, his advocate, he's all those things. Amen. And the spirit of truth. Anyway, go back to communion.